So let's talk about mustering a mighty household of noble and titanic walking war machines and chivalrically laying low the foes of the Emperor on the tabletops of 40k. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Imperial Knights, and more specifically getting an army of them off the ground from a standing start. In the video we'll talk about why you might want to collect the army, and some of the positives and drawbacks in game, some ideas for planning to get a force together, a few potential initial purchases and how to get them cheaper, and a few thoughts on modelling, expanding the army, and one example strong knight army list to put things together. Before we start, and as we're on the subject of new knight armies, I thought I'd just mention the November giveaway for the channel, a big knight household one, where I'll be posting out two starter knight armies to people, a knight household of your own selection. In the giveaway you can pick any three of the Games Workshop Imperial Knights, either Chaos or Imperial, and you could include variants such as the Dominus one or the Abhorrent one if you go in Chaos, if those take your fancy. For a bit of balance, any one knight can be swapped up for four armagers or war dogs if you like, so you could say have one big knight and eight armagers if you wanted. That should yield around about a 1500 point army straight away, and as normal with the channel giveaways, there's two equal ways to enter, either via supporting all specs tactics on Patreon for any amount, or supporting via social media completely for free. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, like the Facebook page, and then the actual entry for the draw is done on a Facebook post that appears on the first of the month. Reply to that post with a picture of a 40k model or imagery, and your name and the date handwritten within the photo. The last bit's just to curb the excess of people spamming things, and make sure it goes to a real hobbyist. I put all the entries equally into a random number generator, do the draw for the two winners, and announce them on the channel update on the 4th of each month. That'll be the 4th of November on this case, and of course there's further similar giveaways every single month. After it's done and posted, I'll probably clip this part out of the video, just so I'm not teasing future viewers with a giveaway that's already passed. In any case, check out the Facebook or the Patreon page, the links are down in the video description if you're interested. Getting properly into today's subject though, why would you want to collect an Imperial Knight army in the first place? Imperial Knights are a pretty unique army within 40k, they basically have the feel of an army full of mini titans, gigantic walking war machines, and a faction that functions very differently to any other. The noble households are scattered across the galaxy, pledge the surface to the Emperor or to the Mechanicum, and are vastly powerful allies to have in times of war, doing much of the heavy lifting on the battlefield. They make war with finely crafted heavy firepower, brutal charges with enormous and deadly combat weapons, and they will generally cut a devastating swathe through the enemies of mankind. The models in the army basically represent different nobles and lesser nobles working their way up the ladder, and bonded with their throne mechanicum with their great knight suits, who have temperamental and powerful machine spirits. Model-wise, they are pretty unusual in 40k. Most armies you generally have a clutch of infantry alongside some bigger vehicles and centerpieces. Imperial knights really are scale above, enormous great big centerpiece models, likely with a few smaller armager walkers in support, and they do look rather striking on the tabletop, there's a lot of scope for customising them and making them look really nice. The line is already quite good quality, they came out in fairly recent years in 40k's history, though generally the entire army is made up of just three really big plastic kits, admittedly with a few different parts to build different variants of the walkers. They're quite nice quality ones and they can magnetise the options quite well, Plus, if you want some more exotic stuff, there are some options from Forge World, a variety of resin knights with some cool alternate chassis. They do get fairly expensive though. In game, with every single model basically being a vehicle or super heavy walker, you do get a lot of raw power from the faction, lots of firepower, and plenty of combat. Plus, they're basically a skew list by nature. If your opponent doesn't have enough anti tank firepower, they're going to be very hard to bring down. In game, they generally tend to focus on having a few big knights supported by some good armagers, which get insanely good when you put some bondsman abilities on them, and most Imperial Knights lists tend to be at least somewhat balanced between the two for that reason. Being a skewed army that's entirely full of super heavy walkers though does have its downsides, it does mean that gameplay experiences can be a bit on the samey side. I feel like other players generally don't mind playing against them every so often, but maybe might get a little bit worn down if they're playing them every single game. They're just an army that mean that a few units in your opponent's army just aren't going to be doing much, and it's very much going to be a game of heavy weapons versus big walking machines. It can also mean that they work a little bit less well at smaller points levels as well, as opposed to big 2000 point games. In game, at current time of recording, Imperial Knights are generally a strong faction, a big 52% win rate at tournaments, which is pretty nice. Generally a very solid army, with scary firepower, okay secondary objectives, and a few powerful tricks. Price-wise, if you want to get an army of them off the ground, they tend to be a little bit cheaper than most armies in 40k. 
You'll generally only need a few big models to fill out an army, rather than lots and lots of small units, but it would bear in mind they don't get any sort of discount boxes like combat patrols or anything, so you are very much going off the raw value of the kits. Still though, as armies go, a pretty easy one to start and jump into the game. In general, compared with most armies, they're a little bit cheaper and easier to get an army together with fast. So if you do decide to commit to a knightly household, then perhaps the next step would doing a bit of research. There's plenty of solid options out there to get better informed about them. Picking up the codex fairly early isn't really the worst idea ever. That'll get you the current faction rules, and hopefully, fingers crossed from Games Workshop, it shouldn't be updated too soon in the future, as it only came out earlier in the year at time of recording. That'll get you a decent amount of lore, background and miniature galleries, plus the model's current rules. Otherwise, for different sources of rules, there's Battlescribe, Warhopedia, and the Warhammer app. They're all places that you can mess around with some army lists if you want to. You could potentially try things out on Tabletop Simulator, or proxying the models in person before you buy. It might let you understand the faction a little bit more, and whether or not you want to commit to a big army. There's loads of content here on YouTube as well. I myself have made a couple of Imperial Knight videos, including a codex review and a tier list, so feel free to give that a look. But there's loads of painting and modelling advice out there as well, plus seeing them in action in battle reports can be another good way to get a feel for them. Lastly, for education, get some inspiration from fellow hobbyists. I'd be very tempted to join some Imperial Knight Discord servers, Facebook pages or subreddits. You can absorb a fair bit from other people's discussions, plus they're good places to ask questions from a new hobbyist perspective. Otherwise, there's plenty of stuff that you can plan. One of the biggest decisions is how the Knight household's going to be painted, so in the project of getting an army together, it's probably worth picking up something like some Armager Warglaives to mess around with colour schemes on to start with, as perhaps maybe a smaller and slightly lower stakes model than a full big knight before you go to town on the big boys. In general, my experience with Imperial Knights is that the majority of people don't tend to just copy colour schemes out of the book and tend to come up with their own. You can certainly copy the scheme of one of the great households if you want to, but knights in general just have a huge amount of scope for going a bit wild with modelling, say putting some fancy freehand on the carapaces, making little dioramas on the bases, or potentially bigger conversion things, swapping out weapons or adding bits to the hull. They're pretty quick to paint efficiently as well, you could get some airbrush techniques to work on them, and in general when I'm assembling and painting them, I'd be very tempted to clip out the armour plate separately to the underskeleton of metal. It's generally very possible to have basically a naked Imperial Knight and spray it in metal, undercoat the armour panels in your main colour of choice, and then only after that glue them all together, and that means that you've basically got a model half painted already, literally just at the spraying stage. In any case, besides colour scheme ideas, another thing that you could be looking at is gameplay, and maybe deciding what sort of 2000 point army list you might want to eventually aim towards. Perhaps the biggest variation is how many big knights or armagers you want in the army list, you can go pretty heavy on the little guys if you want to, though generally a mix is usually preferred. And you could think about any particular combos that you want to try and have in the army, say for example a buffed up Knight Crusader with massive shooting, possibly a Knight Castellum with some big range damage, or maybe going for a bit of a variant build in something like the Freeblade Lance, that can give you a Knight army of a very different flavour, plus some interesting modelling opportunities if you really do embrace the Freeblade colour schemes. Then when it actually comes to buying some models, I would generally try and be aware of the various other places that you can get models aside from direct from Games Workshop, Buying straight through them does have its advantages, they do have good customer service, and it will be pretty reliable for getting the models to you, but it is also generally the most expensive way that you can do so, and often places around the world might have third party sellers that sell things for less, getting exactly the same Games Workshop product for say 15% off. Lots of countries have options like that. One such seller in the UK is Element Games, which I'll link down in the video description, feel free to check them out if you want some cheaper Games Workshop miniatures. Sales through that also do go to help Auspex Tactics as well, though it doesn't cost you any more from clicking through the link. There are plenty of others available of course, that one's only in the UK, but there's plenty say in the US and Australia. Otherwise you could think about the second hand market, Imperial Knights have been out for a fair few years now, and it's very possible you might be able to pick up some big cheap knights second hand, though of course being eBay you might have some damage or some loss of detail with paint, so it's well worth taking a good look at the models. I would also bear in mind that previously Games Workshop used to sell things like the Knight Paladin and Errant without any of the Gallant upgrades or anything like that, so if you did pick up a Quest Doris, it might have some limited options too. Finally, 3D printing certainly is a hot topic within wargaming right now. There's plenty of options for alternate knight parts and aesthetic upgrades and various different sellers. I've seen some pretty cool stuff with things like wolf-headed knights, big hammers in the place of their combat weapons, and really quite cool knight-scale shields. 
Definitely can be an interesting place to pick up some alternative parts and weapons to go with Games Workshop kits. Bearing in mind the alternate sources though, let's take a look at the three main knight kits themselves. I do collect Imperial Knights myself, but I think if I were starting them anew again, the first couple of buys I'd make would be a box of the Armagers and the Preceptor box that builds the other Questorus variants. They're both very central kits to the army, and in my mind it would be really quite unusual to design an army list that didn't have at least one Questorus Knight and at least two Armagers. From Games Workshop's current prices, the Knight Preceptor slash Canis Rex box is £100, 170 US dollars, or 130 euros. And for that one, basically you get a knight that builds all of the Codex variants of Questorus knights. The guns and combat weapons that can make the errant Paladin, Warden, Crusader and Gallant, all of which are basically the same knights with some weapon swaps. The Knight Preceptor, which gets a multi-laser and its Laz Impulsor thing, and gets the knightly teachings to support armagers. And Canis Rex, the Freeblade special character, who's essentially a unique type of Preceptor, and comes with this fun little pilot model which you can field on foot when the knight dies. In general, in the kit you do get an awful lot of plastic guns and things. I'd be very tempted to magnetise them so you can swap them out for different options, but if you do just go traditional and stick it together with plastic glue, you could sell quite a lot of the spare frames for a fair bit of money on eBay or something. Overall, it's quite a solid kit with a ton of options, arguably the core box for the faction. In-game, it's very rare that you wouldn't want to use at least one Questorus Knight in a list at the moment. Currently, perhaps the best are the Errant with the big melter and the advance and charge for the Armagers, the Paladin with its Battle Cannon and big rerolls, the Crusader can be very good with some stacked shooting buffs applied to it, and the others all remain very usable as well for different roles. Otherwise, the other kit that I'd start with, and again as I said I'd probably use this for a test model to start painting up, is the box of Armagers. Again these ones used to come in two separate kits, the Helverins and the Warglaives, but now you get options that can build both out of the same box. Again that's pretty handy if you did feel like magnetising out the arms. Straight from Games Workshop, they're £52.50, $85 or €67.50, and to be honest, from Games Workshop standards, that's really not too bad for two medium-sized vehicles. In other armies, you might well get one vehicle cost almost that much. The Helverins are pretty handy to have as some backfield fire support and hold down those objectives while the other knights advance, and the Warglaives are perhaps one of the single strongest models available to Imperial Knights quite now, making great use of those bondsman abilities and being good sacrificial units to push up to midfield objectives and skirmish with the enemy. In general, most knight armies will want a fair few of them, as one of the main strengths of the faction is giving these bondsman abilities. The majority of Imperial knight armies at the moment seem to run something like two or three Questorers, supported by about four to eight of these. Otherwise, there's the other big boy in the knight, Dominus. He's £105, $170 or €130, Euros, a bit more of a dedicated ranged firepower knight, the Valiant's the close-range one, and the Castellan's the long-ranged anti-tank one. Again, if you find older boxes of them, they used to be in two individual boxes, now they're combined into one set that again you could magnetise. Out of the two in the current codex, the Castellan is currently far stronger. Though Warhammer rules can always be in flux a bit, they can change with balance passes. The Castellan in particular can be a bit of all-eggs-in-one-basket type approach, but one with a few buffs and things could certainly put the fear of the Emperor into enemy armour. Finally, we've got the Forge World options, various different resin knights of different classes. There's the Armage of Moiraxes with some exotic guns. I have seen people convert those out of some 3D printed generic energy weapon parts, and they look quite nice on regular Armager chassis. There's the Questor Megera and Styrix. The Megera really is quite a strong knight in game at the moment, very threatening and pretty tough. There's the Serastus class knights with the long legged Lancer type chassis, and the big Acastus type knights like the Porphyron, a big heavy and long ranged version. I'd say the most interesting in-game currently are the Moiraxes and the Megera. Many of the others just don't really have much synergy with the Codex and don't have the raw stat lines to make them compete otherwise. In general, if you're a new collector, I would probably just advise sticking to Games Workshop's standard range. Otherwise, besides that common tip of spray painting the mechanical parts before adding the armour plates, there are a couple of other decisions that you can make with assembling and painting. I've mentioned it quite a few times already, but if there was ever a 40k army that it really made sense to learn magnetising and bother to do it for your models, it would be Imperial Knights. As mentioned, that nice Questorus kit comes with all sorts of different guns. With a bit of time and effort invested, you can have a model that can literally field every single Questorus variant in the Codex, give you some very different gameplay experiences if you do want to change up your list, and potentially be very, very resilient to Games Workshop's edition changes, and if one option suddenly becomes much better or much worse. There's loads of great guides out there on YouTube for doing this, I'd just pick one and follow along. 
In a fair few places around the world, you can source neodymium magnets really quite cheaply off eBay. I would certainly consider magnetising out the main weapons so you can swap out guns and combat weapons. If you can be bothered as well, I'd be tempted to put one on the top bit for the carapace weapons and potentially even at the waist of the model as well. A big sturdy one can mean that they're quite easy to transport as you can take the main chassis on and off. You can certainly do the same with the armages as well. And I must admit from personal experience, having a magnetised knight household that can change at the drop of a hat has been very handy over the additions of 40k. I've got an awful lot of use out of the models that are bothered to magnetise up. I do appreciate it's not for everyone though, but if you can be bothered to make the effort, I think it will generally reward you enough. Another option is maybe building a renegade house of knights, something that you've modelled and painted that it's a little bit ambiguous as to whether or not they're Imperium or Chaos, and potentially it does mean that if fancy should take you, you could turn your knights to the Dark Gods if you fancied trying out their rules for a bit, maybe getting some dread abilities on the go, and thinking about blessing some of them with some demonic upgrades. Certainly not an approach that everyone will take, as it could have some compromises with modelling, but if you did fancy it and could pull it off and make it look good, then it could be quite nice to access two different codexes worth of rules if you wanted. Once you've got your first models assembled and have a small force, you could think about expanding a bit more towards a big army, maybe something around the 2000 point mark. My advice with building up Warhammer collections is generally to expand things slowly, building up kit by kit rather than buying everything all at once, which could be a big project. Though admittedly that one's not undoable for knights if you are an experienced collector and you're used to painting models in bulk. I think my eventual aim for a knight household will be something like two or three Questorus knights, one Dominus, and maybe somewhere around four to eight armages, and just have that as a theoretical end goal. It would give you a nice knight household that's fairly resilient to Games Workshop's changes and could be fielded in a few different ways in game. It's not the only way to do things though, you could go for a bit more of an armager spam army with a whole ton of the little guys or go for a bit more theme with an exalted court of big nobles and little else. If you wanted to branch out from knights a bit, you could think about adding in a small allied force potentially. 40k knight edition rules do generally tend to punish imperial allies quite harshly. If you take a small force of guard or admech along for example, then it means that you lose access to your oaths and your secondary objectives, both of which would hamper you in competitive games. In more casual games though, if you're playing Tempest of War or something, it's a little bit less essential and it could maybe give you some fun infantry men-at-arms to help support your nobles. In general in 40k it's far easier to do the other way around, adding one knight or one to three armagers to another faction, as that way it doesn't break your army-wide special rules. Adding in a few armagers or war glaives to another imperial army is often a fairly strong choice. Finally, just for one example among many of a competitive knight army list, here's one list that I featured on the channel a while back by Eero Sarkonen, who used it to take second at a tournament called JMP Spring in Grain Town. This lists a House Tyrannis one, giving you a fill no pain type save, plus the Mechanicus bonuses, which make your knights a little bit tougher and regenerate wounds, and it goes fairly heavy on the Armagers, with a fairly hefty 7 in total, 6 Warglaives and a Helverin. The Helverin takes the Bastard's Helm for a plus 1 to wound and revered knight, that can allow your honour points to get a little bit higher. Leading them into battle are a couple of big knights, a knight crusader that's just set up to be very very shooty indeed. It takes the rapid fire battle cannon and avenger gatling cannon and heavy stubber. Has blessed by the sacristans for mortal wounds on sixes, endless fury on the gatling cannon for extra shots, and the master tactician exemplar household upgrade which gives you extra range on the guns plus extra shots on the stubbers. Basically this thing puts out an enormous amount of shots at range, loads of mortal wounds on sixes, and then it's got a Knight Paladin standing next to it, which gives you big rerolls on it with reroll ones to hit and wound, with a combination of Princeps and the Paladin's own rerolls. You could even target the Crusader with the extra stratagem to get even more mortal wounds on sixes, that can be pretty devastating. Otherwise, besides that, the Knight Paladin is armed with a Chainsword and Stubber, he takes the Tyrannus Knight of Mars Warlord trait, plus Iron Bulwark and Sanctuary, giving him a 4 plus inball save at range and melee, so it's going to be really quite tough. Overall, it's a very strong looking list, a whole bunch of obsec armagers scampering all over the place holding down objectives. The whole list is really quite tough to take out with the Tyrannus Feel No Pain and Mechanicus healing, and that Knight Crusader is just going to be belting out a crazy amount of damage each turn, and a whole ton of mortal wounds. It's far from the only way to play knights though, you can certainly go down the avenue of Freeblade Lance or one of the Questor Imperialis households. It is quite nice that there's a couple of viable ways to play the army. So anyway, with all that said and done, I hope you've enjoyed a bit of an overview of collecting Imperial Knights in Warhammer 40k, and I wish any budding collectors well with their own noble households.
As always, if you think that I've missed anything else important, or you've got any other good tips for newer players, please let us know down in the comments. It's always good when people come out with other things that I've not thought of. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, while well, certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I do tend to post new ones just about every day. I'm sure I'll have more for the nights in the future. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked down in the video description if you're interested. The channel's Patreon is what allows me to keep on making these videos quite so regularly. If you have found them useful, any support is enormously appreciated. Plus, of course, it does give you a few advantages, including seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits every month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, then the link is down in the video description. In any case, an absolutely enormous thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.